We're glad to know you're still there. Uh, the finance ministry gets $5.6 million World Bank loan for stationery and others. That's the topic of discussion here. And we're glad to be joined by Nick Aguli, a public affairs commentator. Good morning and welcome to the program, Nick. Good morning. Uh, good morning to our viewers. Uh, Merry Christmas. Yeah, okay. We, we are looking at this headline, Finance Ministry gets $5.6 million World Bank loan for stationaries orders. Let's just take your uh, comment on this headline, what it tells you. This is uh, a sad. Uh, we are taking loans for consumption. And I mean, even if we look at a personal economy, like our own household economy, if a father and mother who are both spending for a family are now having to take loans to finance basic things for the family, like maybe giving, providing for food for the family, to pay their rent or mortgages, and fees and other costs of running the family like utilities like electricity bills and all of that even father and mother have to borrow to be able to fund that for the basic unit of an economy which is a family you will know that that family is in problem that family is in a financial crisis and that has been nigeria's uh, burden for quite a number of years now where the monies that we need to service the loans that we have taken is almost 100% of the revenue that we earn. So the monies used for servicing loans is more than our capital expenditure in our budgets, you know, is, is almost the same with monies for any. So, if a father or a mother or both of them who are earning for a family as they receive their salaries before they leave their offices they have to give away almost 100 percent of the salaries that they have received and then when they arrive home they now start sourcing for loans to be able to fend for the family it's a shoddy situation uh, a situation that shows that this family is is in financial crisis and for me the the, the more worrying aspect of this is that the world bank is involved one will expect that the world bank as a multilateral financial institution with experts on economy finance and all of those kind of areas will be able to see nigeria's debt burden and we stop this whole idea of uh, opening their vault to grant us loans. You know, the other, the other time we heard that they granted us a loan of $800 million. Was it for palliatives? I can't remember what was it. You know, at the advent of the current dispensation, there was this... Eight, sorry? Palliatives, yes, palliatives. Exactly. How can the World Bank you know, as an organized institution, be helping the Nigeria economy go deeper and deeper into crisis. Why would you offer a loan of $800 million for palliatives? The World Bank is meant to be a development bank. You, you give such a loan and make sure that it is invested in agriculture or in power supply or in manufacturing, you know, in steel development either in building the railways to ease transportation or water projects or electricity projects, you know, those kind of projects that will add value to the Nigeria economy and grow our GDP and boost employment and then consequently uh, government revenues. You know, you, you can't be opening your votes and giving a country that is already uh, against, against uh, whose back against the war in terms of uh, struggling with uh, debt problem, so I think the, the 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 World Bank itself, who is granting these loans, uh, has the greater guilt here. That's my my personal opinion about this. 
Um, well, are, are you also of the school of thought that says that um, uh, it's a deliberate policy or it's a deliberate uh, strategy to keep Nigeria where it is because they don't want Nigeria to develop? Because a lot of people have said that because you know that these people are deep in debt, like you're saying, and you're still giving them. So it's another form of enslavement. The, it, even though this thing was initiated in 2018 or thereabouts, it has arrived now, and it is for the procurement of stationery, furniture, and so many other things that, for me, the the simple man, I don't see as being so necessary. I, I mean, if that, an office has existed for more than one year, what, what kind of furniture are you bringing in at this kind of time that people are finding it difficult to even feed, and then your office gets a humongous amount of 5.6 million dollars and then you're using it for stationery and furniture and some other things. I mean, uh, why I cannot categorically say that the World Bank policies in Nigeria, especially the granting of this uh, consumption related loans. loans is a deliberate policy by the federal government he, he, the actions of the federal government uh, give them out as in terms of their intentions not being noble. Because, I mean, if I, if, like, I, I gave the analogy, I started with the analogy of a family whose total income earned by the, by the father and mother uh, is given a way to service loans. My solution to that family's problem will not, will not be to give them additional loans. Instead, my solution to that family will be either I help them to increase their, their incomes or I also help them to reduce their expenditure. If I am able to get them to do, the, the, to do both, then I have actually lifted that family out of the quagmire they have found them. Because if their if their family incomes are rising and their expenditure is on the on the decline, then that family is going to quickly recover from where they are. So they said they walk back who who have all the experts in their employment about economies, about uh, fiscal policies, about monetary policies, about everything should know that Nigeria does not need loans for consumption. Nigeria needs loans for development so that we can build the economy and it is that economy that will not generate the income for government to do their own uh, businesses. And you know, I keep giving people the example. I know a lot of people who think that the Chinese have come to Nigeria or Africa generally to take over Africa, and uh, now become the new colonial masters and all of that. But I disagree with that uh, opinion. I disagree with the viewpoint. The reason is this. You know, like we started at the introductory aspect of this program. I am speaking to you currently now here in Makodi, the capital of Benue State. If you look at the road that the Chinese have built from Kefi to Makodi, it's the best road in Nigeria as of today. I have not been on many other roads in Nigeria, but as far as I have been driving on Nigerian roads, these roads that the Chinese have constructed from Kefi to Makudi, they have dualized the road. And it used to be one of the most dangerous roads in Nigeria. Some of our, our, our viewers would have heard about the notorious Akwanga Hills, where a lot of accidents, especially with trucks, you have trucks because the hills were so steep that when trucks are climbing them, often they lose energy, lose their brakes, and start descending down, crashing into other vehicles. And even when they were descending, again, they had to descend so slowly, you know, on their brakes. And then you, you find out that accidents were very common. The Chinese came, what did they do? Instead of building a road up the hill, as the former engineers did, they cut through the hill and built a flat road. So these days, when you are passing at Kwanga Hills, you are passing on level ground, and you only be looking at the, the old road, which was up there on the hill. 
That is the kind of development that we expect the West to be bringing to Africa. And not this whole issue of bringing laws. And these laws, they will take it back through, because I can assure you that this law that has been given, if you go to the World Bank, a chunk of the loans will be used for, for um, uh, professional services. That is, their own staff who are like advisors to the laws. Uh, sometimes they bring their own people in, in the country, to do one or two things. All their pay is going to come off from that same loan. There's nothing on the ground to show that the World Bank is here to help us. So, as far as I'm concerned, if people don't agree with me, I am saying that the model adopted by the Chinese is a better model for us. Because now we have the road on the ground. And that road is a loan of which the Chinese are now building toll gates along the road so that they can recover their money. I am more than happy to even pay 10,000 Naira toll each time I pass on that road than what was there before, a death trap that was there before. Before now, if I traveled on that road with my car, I was going to change the shocks, I was going to change the bushings, I was going to do some work on my exhaust, all sorts of things because the road was very bad. And as the Chinese have got us infrastructure in place, this to me is the model that the central, I mean the, the World Bank should adopt. And if the World Bank cannot adopt this, the Nigerian government should not should not be patronizing them. Let us go to those who are ready and willing to come and help us to build this economy. Uh, but you know also that, uh, this is an aside, you, you know also that if the Chinese are coming to build the roads, uh, some cutouts will not go to some people as when the loans are taken. We hear that this loan is a, a grant to the states, but uh, a loan to the federal government. I don't know how that works, but uh, let's see how it goes. Now, you've just given one solution to uh, the alternative to taking loans from the, the World Bank. What other alternatives do we have? And, um, Chinese have come, they're building infrastructure and tolling the infrastructure or finding ways to get their money out of the infrastructure they have built for us. What other alternatives do we have if we uh, cannot take loans from the World Bank to do whatever we need to do? The main alternative as a solution to the Nigerian economy is what we did to telecoms. I keep giving this example of telecoms. Telecoms, as I grew up, as I grew up as a as a as a child to becoming a young adult to a, an adult and an undergraduate and all of that, telephone in Nigeria came with so much pains, so much pains. You had to go to the night office, queue up at night to be able to push a call through, and to get a phone line, you will not get a phone line. And if NITE gave you a phone line, even they had landlines, wired landlines, they will put this wire through to your, to your building, then they will divert that line at the box to a business center nearby. And the business center will be using your line to make calls and collect money from members of the public and transferring bills to you. The government solution to it was then was that the, they will set up uh, tax forces on business centers headed by young majors all over Nigeria. So instead of the young majors uh, providing security for all, which is their this thing, they will now be the, the, the head, heads of tax forces that will carry army trucks with army people. They will go around town. Uh, beating up a uh, business center. Yet, Nigeria was spending billions in the budget for NITE, and NITE was only making promises for funds. We're not seeing funds. I tell people, and this is a practical example that when I married my wife, she was living in Abuja. She had a not nine not phone, as it used to be called. Kagule took my wife to worry where I was. I was working, and not nine not service was not in worry. So in one of my trips back to Abuja, my wife gave me her not nine not phone. I came and sold it. in Abuja for 150,000 I sold this phone not to the end user but to a middleman who was going to let it off at 200,000 250,000 and that is why the Minister of Communication as at that time David Mack said the phone was not for the poor that is immediately we let the private sector run that uh, that business 
the ATS, the head tests, and the gloves and all came in, and they have given us phones from about uh, 100,000 lines that we had in Nigeria then. Today, Nigeria has 200 million, almost 200 million active lines. If you want a million SIM cards now, these uh, providers are going to give it to you. The tax forces have suddenly disappeared. There is no racketeering of phone again. Instead of uh, telephone being a cost item on the budget of Nigeria, it is now a revenue item because uh, the telecom companies are putting money into government coffers through taxes and other uh, uh, through other means. That is the solution for the Nigerian economy. If we let go electricity, the railways, the uh, water project, roads. Everything in Nigeria, if we let it go in the private sector in the same way we have let telecoms go, the Nigerian economy will boom. Because you see, the MTNs and co didn't come with loans. They came with their monies. And they invested these monies in Nigeria's economy. As of the last time I checked, they had invested more than $100 billion building the infrastructure to provide tele telecommunication services to Nigeria. It's not a loan on the balance sheet of Nigerians. It is a, 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 an investment, a foreign direct investment. So if we open up this economy to global capital, they are going to come in with foreign direct investment. We will not even be talking about loans. Because look, nobody ignores an economy of 200 million people. Nobody ignores that economy. So it is just for the government to be sincere in their policy making, to be sincere in their, uh, in their government uh, execution of uh, activities and allow all the other sectors to also receive foreign direct investment the way the telecoms have received. This, to me, is the main solution that we have to prosecute. Mm. Okay, uh, well, it will be a wonderful way to end the program this morning. would like to say thank you to you, but first of all, your... Um, New Year message to Nigerians before we wrap it up. My New Year message to Nigerians is that there are four arms of government. The, the, the presidency, the judiciary, the legislature, and the people. Let us, in 2024, become very active in the people arm of government. Any country where the people arm of government is docile, uninterested, not engaged, not uh, hand-holding and, and, and going along with the governance process with the other three arms of government suffered. It is the people arm of government that put pressure on the other three arms of government to deliver good governance. All the places that people are jacking to, that is what is happening there. The people are the ones putting pressure. Nigeria, let us learn to put pressure on our leaders. As I'm sitting here, I am guilty. Because if you ask me, who is the member of the House of Assembly in Benue State representing my constituency? I don't know his name. So in 2024, let us know his name. Let us be calling him, writing him letters, going to visit him. If it means protest, protest, so that he will know that this is our mind on certain policies of government. We should do the same to members of our National Assembly. We do the same to the governors and to the president and his team. It's the only way that we can enjoy the dividends of democracy. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Nika Gule, for your thoughts this morning, and we wish you a, a very, very prosperous New Year 2024. Thank you so very much, and uh, Merry Christmas once again to our viewers, and a Happy New Year 2024 coming up. Mm, thank you very much. Okay, we've been talking with uh, Nika Gule, a public affairs analyst. He joined us from uh, Benue State, and this is where we draw the curtain for today. We hope that you had a wonderful time. Uh, tomorrow is yet another day. It's going to be the 28th day of December 2023. 2023 is gradually winding off, and we hope that uh, you wouldn't beat yourself too much in case all the list of things that you wanted to achieve, you couldn't achieve. It's just another day and another year that will come up. So make your plan, uh, do what you can do, be practical, uh, be, 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 be realistic in whatever plan that you're doing. And 2024 will be a year that you are going to be 
very grateful for. But before you end this year, sit down, look at how your life has been in 2023 and count the things that God has done for you. Like they say in the song, count your blessings, name them one by one. You'll be amazed at the kind of things that God has done for you, uh, even though they are not the ones that you put on your list for uh, you to achieve in 2023, but God has blessed you in ways that you cannot even describe. We hope that 2024, like I said, will be better than 2023. In the meantime, tomorrow is another day. Until then, on behalf of the entire team of Breakfast on Plus TV Africa, my name is Nyamgul Agaji. Have a wonderful day.